Good morning. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. A couple of announcements. Uh, the Christmas program will practice will be today from 3 to 5. And the service will be held uh, on December the 16th at 1030. Also, the annual cookie walk will be held on Sunday, December the 16th. And the cookies will be located in the main hallway. Uh, let us begin our worship service. At this time, we would have the lighting of the Advent candles. Second one. On the four Sundays of an Advent, we light a new candle each week. And these candles are uh, the Hope candle, and now the Peace candle has been lit. The other two are Joy and Love. Jesus Christ is the hope of all nations. Please rise. Come and hear all the Lord has done. He has sent his Son to baptize with the Holy Spirit and fire. He has sent his Son to save the world. Jesus the Messiah has come and will come again. Hallelujah to the King. Until he returns, we will be pride with his fire. We will reflect the love of our Savior. Amen. O oh, great King of kings, we are amazed by you. How can you love us? How can you desire us to be your kingdom inheritance? We are wretched sinners. 
Yet you purify us with your refining fire. Fill us with righteousness. Teach us your perfect ways. We are eager to be more like you. In the name of the Father and Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Forgiving God, we bow before your mercy seat with hearts humble because you deserve all the glory. You have the power to judge and to save, to cast out and to grant grace, and to cover our sins with the precious blood of Jesus. Lord, where we cherish sin in our hearts, rid us of wickedness and evil. Where we harbor darkness, shine your piercing light. We need you now. Forgive us, Lord Jesus. You alone had the power to wash us white as snow and remember our sins are no more. Grant us strength and grace to turn away from sin and walk in your righteousness with you all the days of our life. By the blood of Jesus, we are forgiven and free. Amen. You may be seated. The Old Testament reading is found written in the third chapter of Malachi. Behold, I send my messenger, and he will prepare the way before me, and the Lord whom you will seek, whom you seek, will suddenly come to his temple, and the messenger of the covenant in whom you delight. Behold, he is coming, says the Lord of hosts. But who can endure the day of his coming? And who can stand where when he appears? For he is like a refiner's fire and like fuller's soap. He will sit as a refiner and purifier of silver. And he will purify the sons of Levi and refine them like gold and silver. And they will bring offerings in righteousness to the Lord. Then the offering of Judah and Jerusalem will be pleasing to the Lord. <clears throat> as in the days of old and as in former years. Then I will draw near to you for judgment. I will be a swift witness against the sorcerers, against the adulterers, against those who swear falsely, against those who oppress the hired worker in his wages, the widow and the fatherless, against those who thrust aside the sojourner and do not fear me, says the Lord of hosts. For I, the Lord, do not change. Therefore, you... O children of Jacob, are not consumed. For the days of your father, from the days of your fathers, you have turned aside from my statutes and have not kept them. Return to me, and I will return to you, says the Lord of hosts. This is the word of the Lord. And the epistle reading is found written in. St. Paul's letter to the Christians at Philippi, uh, chapter 1. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I thank my God in all my remembrance of you, always in every prayer of mine, for you all making my prayer with joy, because of your partnership in the gospel from the first day until now. And I am sure of this that he who began a good work in you will bring it to completion at the day of Jesus Christ. It is right for me to feel this way about you all because I hold you in my heart. For you are all partakers with me of grace, both in my imprisonment and in the defense and confirmation of the gospel. For God is my witness, how I yearn for you, all with the affection of Christ Jesus. And it is my prayer that your love may abound more and more with knowledge and all discernment, so that you may approve what is excellent, and so be pure and blameless for the day of Christ, filled with the fruit of righteousness that comes through Jesus Christ, to the glory, uh, to the glory and praise of God. This is the word of the Lord.
Please rise for the reading of the Holy Gospel. The Holy Gospel is written in the third chapter of St. Luke, beginning of verse 1. In the fifteenth year of the reign of Tiberius Caesar, Pontius Pilate, being governor of Judea, and Herod being tetrarch of Galilee, and his brother Philip tetrarch of the region of Itura and Traconius, and Lysanias, tetrarch of Abilene, during the high priesthood of Annas and Caiaphas, the word of the Lord came to John, the son of Zechariah, in the wilderness. And he went into all the region around Jordan, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. As it is written in the book of Isaiah, the prophet, the voice of one crying in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, make his path straight. Every valley shall be filled, and every mountain and hill shall be made low, and the crooked shall become straight, and the rough places shall become level ways, and all flesh shall see the salvation of God. He said, therefore, to the crowds that came out to be baptized by him, you brood of vipers, who warned you to flee from the wrath to come, bear fruit in keeping with repentance. And do not begin to say to yourselves, We have Abraham as our father. For I tell you, God is able from these stones to raise up children for Abraham. Even now the axe is laid to the root of the trees. Every tree, therefore, that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. And the crowds ask him, What then shall we do? And he answered them, Whoever has two tunics is to share with him who has none. And whoever has food is to do likewise. Tax collectors also came to be baptized and said to him, Teacher, what shall we do? And he said to them, Collect no more than you are authorized to do. Soldiers asked him, And what shall we do? And he said to them, do not extort money from anyone by threats or by false accusation, and be content with your wages. As the people were in expectation and all were questioning in their hearts concerning John, whether he might be the Christ, John answered them all by saying, I baptize you with water, but he who is mightier than I is coming, the strap of whose sandals I am not worthy to untie. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit, and fire. His winnowing fork is in his hand to clear his threshing floor and to gather the wheat into his barn, but the chaff he will burn with unquenchable fire. So with many other exhortations he preached good news to the people. But Herod the Tetrarch, who had been reproved by him for Herodias, his brother's wife, and for all the evil things that Herod had done, added this to them all, and he locked up John in prison. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. We make confession of our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was good and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen.
Grace, mercy, and peace be to you from our risen Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. May his spirit open up our hearts and minds to his word. Amen. Our text for today is found in Galatians chapter 20, uh, 2, verse 20. I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. And the life I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. This is the word of the Lord. Today we are celebrating the second Sunday of Advent, and Advent is a time that reminds us of the coming of our Lord and Savior. His first coming, when he was born in the city of Bethlehem, when the angel said to the shepherds on the fields of Bethlehem, I bring you good news of great joy, for unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. And we think of his coming into our hearts when we were baptized into Christ and we became his children. And we also remember that he's gonna come again. And he's gonna come again and call all those who have died from the graves and he's going to take us to the glories of heaven to live with him forevermore. What a grand time that will be. When God gave the first promise of a savior, to Adam and Eve, almost 4,000 years went by before he came, and that promise was fulfilled. And as he was about to begin his ministry, he had sent a way preparer, one we heard about in the Old Testament reading today and in the first uh, few verses, and also in our gospel reading today. John prepared the way of the Christ. He prepared the way for the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. He called upon his people that heard him to repent and to believe. As we look forward now to that celebration of the first coming of Jesus in the flesh, a time when he wrapped himself, he who was God himself, wrapped himself in human flesh and became one of us. We look forward to that celebration with joy. But you know, Christmas has sometimes, I'd say not just sometimes, but has lost its true meaning. You know, when I watch TV and that, and I like to watch some of these Christmas programs, but they never really talk about Jesus. What they talk about is the magic of Christmas, as though it was some kind of a magic thing. And there's nothing magic about Christmas. It should all center in Jesus. And uh, then the emphasis is upon Santa Claus is coming to town, right? Santa Claus gets a lot of publicity, and Jesus gets little. But it is Jesus who has become the most wonderful gift of mankind. For in him we have our relationship restored with God and become God's people forever. Did you know that Santa Claus and the legend from which it came was a real person? Did you ever hear of St. Nicholas? Sometimes we say, jolly old St. Nicholas. Did you know that December the 6th was a time that St. Christ- uh, Nicholas is honored in the church? The word Santa meant saint. Claus uh, comes from a Dutch word for Nicholas. And so he was Santa Claus. Well, today... There's a lot of things said about Santa Claus, but I'd like to share with you a few things about St. Nicholas, who was a real person. And he was born in a very wealthy family. But when he became a Christian, he decided not to pursue wealth, but to bring the message of hope and salvation to all people. He lived in a town called Myra, he became a bishop. And there, the people were very corrupt, immoral, self-indulging. 
Sound like any nation or any place you know? Sounds like America and other places in the world. But he became well known because he preached the message of the cross. And he not only preached the message of the cross, but he was out doing things for people, helping them. He really had a compassion for the widow and the orphans. And he urged the churches to care about people who were in need. And many times gifts were given to the impoverished people. And that's the way this gift giving seemed to have begun. And there was a famous story told about St. Christopher. There in Myra, there was three uh, women in the same family. This man had three daughters. And, and in those days, you had to have a, dower, a dowry to get married. Well, this man had no way of helping his daughters. And it meant that their lives would probably be that of prostitution. This bothered St. Nicholas a whole lot. And so he decided to dip into his own funds and he filled up three bags with gold coins. And on three successive nights, he would walk by this man's house and he'd throw one of those bags into a window, into the house, through the window, open window into the house. He didn't want them to know who was giving the gift. He gave three bags so that these ladies would have the opportunity to be married and not live a life that was contrary to the word of God. And then there's another occasion where three men were falsely accused and they were sentenced to death. And he went to the judge on their behalf and he was able to get them set free. It seemed that in his life there was often three people involved. There was another instance where three sailors were drowning and he saved them. But you might say that fit very much in with his belief in the Trinity. There is one God, but three persons, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And he proclaimed that faithfully. That there is only one God and there is only one way of salvation and that is through Jesus Christ. Jesus had given him a new life and he constantly throughout his ministry pointed people to this Jesus who saved him and who wanted to save all people. Nicholas always preached Christ. You could say he was Santa Claus, St. Nicholas. He wasn't a Santa Claus that drew attention to himself, but he was one who preached and pointed people to Jesus. He was not a Santa Claus who said, I better not be naughty or nice. He's making a list and checking it twice. But he was a person who proclaimed that we're all sinners. That God loves us all. And yet we are saints. Because we have been cleansed in the blood of the Lamb. And that we all desperately need His mercy, His love, and His forgiveness. God's grace, His love, and His forgiveness just emanated out of St. Christopher's life. He was kind and he was generous. He was a very forgiving pers person. Again, he used his resources. His, he sacrificed what was his in order to help those three ladies. To and that reminds us of how Jesus sacrificed to help us so that we would not end up in destruction. 
St. Nicholas rescued those ladies. Jesus rescued us, though we don't deserve it. And Jesus didn't rescue us with silver coins, a bag of gold. Peter says it wasn't with gold or silver, but with his holy precious blood, his innocent suffering and his death. And he is the one who makes us a worthy bride to dwell in the presence of God forever. And Nicholas also stood up for those who were facing death. He risked his own name and reputation to do that. And didn't Jesus do that for us also? We were sentenced to death, eternal death. But Jesus came into this world on behalf of all mankind in order to set us free, in order to declare us innocent before God. He paid the debt that we could not pay and he overcame the power of the grave for each of us. And because of Jesus, we will live forever. And Jesus is still pleading for us. Oh, we find ourselves guilty of sin. But the Bible tells us if any man does sin, we have an advocate, one who is standing there in our defense, an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous one. He is the atoning sacrifice for our sins, and not only for ours, but for the sins of the whole world. Through Jesus, we are set free. It was the love of Christ that worked in St. Nicholas's heart and his life. And it is that same love that works in the lives of all of God's people. When we were baptized into Christ, it be, we became Christ's people. And it could be said of us, it is no longer I who live, but it's Christ who lives in me. And it is Christ who works in our lives through his word and through the sacrament. It is Christ who changes our life to be caring and to reach out to those who are in need. At this Christmas time, as we give a gift, let us remember St. Christopher or Santa Claus, who let Christ live in him. May we see every present that we give as a gift of love. May it remind us of the greatest gift that God ever gave us. He gave us his son who wrapped himself in human flesh in order that our lives might be blessed this day, every day, every Christmas. It's a gift that never ends. It's a gift that he wants us to share with others. To God be the glory. Great things he has done so loved the world. He gave us his son. Amen. Now may the peace of God which surpasseth all understanding keep our hearts and our minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. We now receive our tithes and offerings unto the Lord.
We to turn to the prayers on page 7. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Dear Heavenly Father, as we prepare the way for Christ to come, we proclaim, Blessed is the King who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest. Lord, we have kept our distance from you. Our repentance and return has been half-hearted and imperfect. Forgive us and return to us despite our failures. For the blessed is the King who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest. Lord, we have kept our distance from our neighbors, from the suffering and forsaken, from the widow and the orphan, from the foreigner and refugee. Strengthen us to serve our neighbors and strengthen them in their trials. Blessed is the King who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest. Lord, heal the sick, injured, and recovering among us. We ask that you would be with Pastor Gall and give him the healing he needs and also to Ruth. Be with Justin Norris who had surgery and may the healing take place quickly and Karen Flock. Be with Bev Custer and Esta Johnson. And we also ask that you would be with Reverend Michael Seidenstricker who will be having back surgery. Strengthen them with your gracious hand and with your unwavering presence. Blessed is the King who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest. Lord, console the grieving with your presence. Be with the families of Elnora Smallwood, who was called from this life, who was laid to rest yesterday. Comfort them with the hope of the resurrection life that is ours in Christ Jesus. Blessed is the King who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest. Lord, gladden the hearts of those who rejoice and direct their praise of thanksgiving to you. Grant that their rejoicing lead us all to say, Blessed is the King who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest. Lord, help us to live under your perfect care. Prevent us from turning aside to idols and distractions. Keep our eyes fixed on Jesus, that we evermore proclaim, Blessed is the King who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest. Into your hands, Lord Jesus, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your ever-present mercy. Amen. And we continue with the uh, celebration of the Lord's Supper. We gather and we pray together. Father, pour out your Holy Spirit on us as we give thanks for your body and blood. We pray that we may redeem body of Christ. Unify us as one people, one with each other and one with you. Until Jesus returns in final victory, we will feast at his table and proclaim his return. All honor, glory, and power is yours, Lord, forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it, gave it to the disciples, and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you, this do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also he took the cup when he had supped, when he had given thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Until Jesus returns, or I continue... You may be seated. We continue with communion song. In this true blood, strengthen you and preserve you in the one true faith unto life eternal.
May the love of the Lord Jesus Christ surround you. May the fervor of the Lord fill you with righteousness and the fire of the Holy Spirit ignite you to carry the gospel torch to the ends of the earth. We are the light of Christ. Refine us, Lord, with your blazing fire. He will return and we will be ready. May the Lord be with you and also with you. Amen. Take a moment to greet each other in the peace of Christ and let each other know you're glad to see one another.